Leonardo from Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn is a unit that I find fascinating. On the surface, he appears to be the run-of-the-mill bad archer, the sort of thing that you get out of Gordon or Rebecca or Will or any number of other terrible early game archers. While low bases are not a unique attribute amongst the Dawn Brigade, at least Edward and Aaron have really high growth so that they can trick you into thinking they are an investment project. Leonardo does not have high growths, with a 40% strength growth and a 35% speed growth. At least he has 75% in skill and 65% in luck. 55% in resistance, this guy has just invested in good growths for the worst stats in the game. On top of that, his inherent skill Cancel is kind of a non-bow with the playstyle that being an archer tends to lean you towards. Cancel prevents the enemy from counterattacking, but theoretically, since he's an archer, he should be attacking enemies who can't counterattack anyway. So yeah, even his skill is pointless. What is the upside to this unit? Well, actually there's quite a lot of them. Leonardo leverages a lot of the unique mechanics of his game to his advantage. The most prominent of these is his access to crossbows, which are the 1-2 range bow variant unique to Radiant Dawn. Crossbows don't work like other 1-2 range weapons, however, because they have incredibly high might and hit in exchange for not factoring in the user's strength. The idea is that if you're firing a gun, then it doesn't really matter how strong you are, you're going to do the same amount of damage anyway. In most situations, this actually ends up being pretty underwhelming. Sure, it's impressive to have a 24 or 28 might weapon, but if you're not factoring in the unit's strength, it often ends up dealing less damage than if you used a weaker weapon with a unit who could actually factor in their strength stat. z or Jill can one-round people much more easily than Leonardo with a crossbow. However, the area where crossbows shine is when dealing effective damage. They will inherently deal effective damage to all flyers other than wyverns because of favoritism reasons. This means that if you use a crossbow against a Pegasus Knight or a Hawk, then you're probably going to one-round them, and because crossbows are incredibly accurate, you're not going to miss either. And hey, wouldn't you look at that? 3-13 is a map with a lot of flying Hawks, and 3-12 has several Pegasus Knights that you need to get rid of as well. This means that on those maps, crossbow-wielding Leonardo can act as a frail but effective delete button, with perfect accuracy and one-shot potential. His speed and strength don't matter, he's going to kill you anyway. But that's not all, because the Dawn Brigade also has access to the Beast Foe skill, which grants the wielder effective damage against all Lagoos. And wouldn't you know that, 3-6, one of the hardest maps that the Dawn Brigade has, is against a bunch of Beast Lagoos. If you slap Beast Foe on Leonardo, he can one-shot all of the Cats and Tigers with his amazing 28 Might effective damage crossbow. And to clarify, that's 28 before you triple it. After the effective damage calculation, it is an attack power of 84. Nobody's standing up to that. Now, admittedly, Leonardo's only going to deal effective damage to the Cats and Tigers if they've transformed, which is where another tool in his arsenal comes in, the Ludeslaga. Lud Ludeslaga. Leonardo's personal bow. It's a 16 might 100 hit bow that grants him a 5 speed bonus, and this is often enough for him to one round untransformed Lagoos from 2 range. Now that may not sound like a super impressive feat, but remember, in Radiant Dawn, untransformed Lagoos can still counterattack, so being able to one round them from 2 range as opposed to having to one round them at 1 range means that he doesn't face a counter, and considering how frail he and most of the rest of the Dawn Brigade are, not getting countered is a good thing. Lara and Micaiah are working overtime trying to heal up the rest of the squad, so being able to get a kill without being countered is very, very nice. And if that's not enough, 3-6 has one other treat for Leonardo, the Brave Bow. Now this isn't a personal weapon of his, but the only other person in the Dawn Brigade who can use it is Fiona, and only if she reaches tier 3, so this might as well be Leonardo's personal weapon, at least for part of the game. If he gets unlucky and isn't able to reach the doubling thresholds he needs to with the Ludislaga, he can use the Brave Bow and one round people that way instead. Now, admittedly, none of these tools actually help him out defensively. They are all offensive tools, and if he gets attacked, he's probably going to die. But thankfully, it's actually fairly easy to keep Leonardo out of harm's way while also allowing him to engage with the enemy. Both 3-12 and 3-13 have choke points for you to take advantage of, and since Leonardo attacks at 2 or 3 range, he can safely fire away from behind his tougher comrades. 
3-6, on the other hand, is full of Lagoos who mostly start out untransformed. The untransformed Lagoos have only one tile of movement in the swamp, which means that it's not actually that difficult to allow Leonardo to take a kill while also not being in range of anyone who can attack him on that enemy phase. It's important to remember that if a cat or tiger starts out their turn untransformed, then they have to move before transforming, which means they still only effectively have one movement in the swamp. Now, everything I've been talking about kind of depends on him being a sniper. He can't use crossbows if he's not a sniper, he doesn't get access to three range if he's not a sniper, and honestly, without the promotion bonuses, his combat probably isn't good enough with either the Brave Bow or the Luda Slugga Lugga Lugga. And as much as I've been hyping up Mr. DiCaprio, the performance I've been describing is not actually that stellar. Like, this is an army that has access to Volug, Toronio, Jill, and Zeharg. The little boy who deletes one enemy per turn and needs to position outside of attack range on enemy phase isn't exactly cutting it. So the question becomes, why exactly am I bothering training this piss poor archer if he turns into a slightly less piss poor archer? And the answer is, who else are you training? Like seriously, who else are you training in the early Dawn Brigade chapters? Leonardo is a free deploy until the end of 1-6-2, and his competition for experience in the early game isn't exactly stellar. I've made an entire video on Makaya, and I do think that she is a good short-term investment. However, in the long term, her stats don't really matter. Meg is a meme unit, so you can invest in her if you want, but you know, you're memeing around, you're not doing it because it's quote unquote optimal. And good for you, because Meg is awesome. This is the year of Braum, after all. Soth and Volog are going to have very low experience gain, and while Leonardo and Aaron do have those juicy growth rates, in the end, I think that it's a temptation that it's not worth falling for. After all, their bases are incredibly low, so they end up being just mediocre infantry who have slightly better stats than Leonardo, but lack his unique utility. And his utility isn't just limited to the bows that he can wield, because Leonardo is the only member of the Dawn Brigade with the water affinity. And because of the way supports work in Radiant Dawn, he can support with anyone else and boost both their attack and defense. I know a lot of people are very high on Earth because it gives you a bunch of avoid, but I personally think water is the strongest affinity. And Leonardo offers that if you're willing to field him enough to build supports with people. As a result, I think Leonardo might actually be the best early game investment target in Radiant Dawn. Sure, both his bases and growths look bad, but if you're willing to give the Ninja Turtle a chance, then you'll see that he has a lot of potential. Wait, potential? Why does that word sound familiar? One of the things that is fascinating about Leonardo to me is he has all of these unique tools, all of this tech that takes advantage of the mechanical anomalies of Radiant Dawn. And none of it actually matters because he's still very, very bad. Like, arguably it makes him better than Edward and Meg, but if you have to put in this much work to prove you're better than Edward and Meg, you are not in a good situation. So let's start by talking about my most recent point, the water affinity. Because I meant what I said when I said it's probably the strongest affinity, but not in isolation. You kind of need to do a double water support. And Leonardo having the only water affinity means that he can't actually do double water support. Water boosts both attack and defense, but the way that those boosts work is it's only 0.5 per level. So at C rank you get 0.5 in attack and defense, at B you get 1 in attack and defense, and at A you get 1.5. Unfortunately for poor Leonardo, the 0.5s are rounded down in Radiant Dawn. This means that on its own, the water support doesn't actually offer any boosts until you get to the B rank. Now granted, a lot of people will have 0.5 in either attack or defense, but some amount of the water affinity is going to go to waste. For example, if Leonardo supports Aaron, who has the thunder affinity, at C rank they will get plus 1 to defense, but nothing to attack. At B rank, they get plus 2 to defense, but only 1 point to attack, and at A rank, they would get plus 3 to defense, but nothing to attack. 
This is in addition to the evade that is granted by the thunder affinity as well. So while in a vacuum the water affinity is likely the best since it's the only one that boosts both offense and defenses, in practice I think it might actually be the worst because it's the only one that's almost guaranteed to waste some amount of support boosts. But of course the support bonuses are just a minor part of Leonardo's kit. The main appeal is being able to one-shot, so let's talk about that beast foe crossbow build. You probably don't want to give Leonardo beast foe. It is an incredibly competitive skill and it can only be on one unit for the entire map. If you put it on Leonardo, then that means both Zhark and Chill are missing it and will fail to hit some damage thresholds that they otherwise would. While beast foe definitely gives Leonardo the biggest glow up out of all the possible candidates, it's because he needs it the most. Jill can hit one round thresholds with a forged steel axe, and Zhark can hit one round thresholds with a forged steel blade. Sure, both of these units will face a counter, but they can actually afford to take the hits. And you have both Laura and Micaiah on standby with physic if necessary. As far as the Brave Bow is concerned, while you could use it to have Leonardo one round some untransformed Lagoos, you could also just save it in the convoy until the armies join up with each other, and then hand it to a more competent unit specifically Shinon. Alternatively, alternatively, if you're not using any bow units, you can also just like sell it and then buy something more useful. It's also important to bear in mind that the Brave Bow is acquired on 3-6 as a hidden item. It's like a desert item, but in the swamp because Radiant Dawn is problematic like that. This means that Leonardo is not even going to have it in his starting inventory, and there's no guarantee that you'll get it in a timely manner. You could use the Brave Bow to shoot down flyers in 3-12 and 3-13, but like, that feels like a huge waste. That is what the crossbow is for, not the Brave Bow. That is a much higher value item than shooting down flyers in 3-12 and 3-13. Oh my gosh. Now, the Ludus Laga, yeah, I, that one is genuine tech. I think that killing untransformed cats and tigers with the Ludus Laga is actually quite useful, and it's not especially difficult for Leonardo to hit those one rounding thresholds, especially if you get him to promotion, which you probably want to because he needs to promote to Sniper in order to use crossbows. And I do think that shooting down flyers in 3-12 and 3-13 especially is useful, although it is worth noting that both of those maps do have aggressive strategies that would not rely on Leonardo, specifically rushing forward in 3-12 and killing Ike in 3-13. If you are taking advantage of those aggressive strategies, then Leonardo kind of just doesn't matter whatsoever. But if you want to play more defensively, then Crossbow Leonardo can be a genuinely helpful tool in your arsenal, especially because, if we're being honest, he's probably not going to be very useful in Part 4, so if you need to throw him away as a sacrifice strat, like, you can. It's kind of heartless, but you can. But on the topic of getting him to promotion, let's take a look at the early king. Because while I said that there's not really anyone else that you're training in the early Dawn Brigade chapters, that's not entirely true. I kind of glossed over it, but Makaya is a good short-term investment, as it can help her to reach one-shot thresholds with Fanny for a couple of difficult bosses and armor knights. Additionally, giving Edward kills early on is probably more useful to your short-term plan than Leonardo, even if Leonardo is a better long-term investment. Partially, this is because Edward's stats are just on the edge of some thresholds for 1-1, 1-2, and 1-3. And partially, this is because it's just easier to feed Edward kills than Leonardo. As an archer, Leonardo's natural role is to chip people down so that the one range lock units can get the kills. If you're trying to feed Leonardo, then you end up having Edward or Nolan or Aaron or Micaiah do the attack first, and if it's someone one range locked, then they also have to take a counter, which means they have to get healed up. Meanwhile, if Leonardo gets chipped, it hurts him because he doesn't get as much experience, but it helps your short term plan because you can kill someone without taking a counter. Leonardo needs 6 levels before he can use a master seal. Deployment slots start being competitive in 1-7. This means you really, really want Leonardo to hit 10 by the end of 1-6-2. To reach this threshold, you might have to focus on feeding Leonardo kills that he's not naturally getting, and as a result, deprive experience from some of the other units in your army. While it's true that the early Dawn Brigade isn't exactly experience hungry, there are definitely some payoffs to investing in them. In 1-5 you get Voluk, who doesn't gain that much experience, but immediately wants to start doing combat in order to raise his strike rank. Zhark joins in 1-6, and he is one of the only two units capable of using Paragon, the other one being Micaiah. 
Well, I guess technically Tyronio, but that doesn't really count. If you give Z-Hark Paragon, it makes up for his promoted experience gain to an extent and can allow him to hit True Blade by 3-6, which is a very important threshold. And of course, everyone's favorite training project is Jill. She also shows up in 1-6-1, and while her stats are pretty mediocre for the time, she's the only flyer the Dawn Brigade has, and so if you want a competent flyer, you do need to start feeding her, and that's going to compete with feeding Leonardo. As a result, if Leonardo hasn't hit level 10 by the end of 1-5, he's probably not making it there. Of course, all of this time I've kind of been talking around Leonardo's biggest competition in the early game and that is the absolute all-star, Nolan. While Nolan starts at level 9, and therefore gains experience more slowly than the rest of the Dawn Brigade around him, he's also more competent at fighting, which means he has many more opportunities to gain said experience. And it's not like he has a massive experience drop-off compared to his peers. Like, Nolan's gonna be gaining less than Leonardo and Edward, but not leagues less. Starting at level 9 also means that if you just want someone whose stats don't matter and can wield a crossbow, Nolan is better at that than Leonardo too. He needs 100 experience to promote into Warrior, and Warriors can use both axes and crossbows. So everything I said about Leonardo with a crossbow also applies to Nolan, but hey, Nolan is bulky enough to take one round of combat without dying, which is something that doesn't apply to Leonardo. Now you could hashtag just use both, but do you actually need two different crossbow wielders? Like, there's only one beast bow, and it's already probably not going to your crossbow person. And yes, it's nice to shoot down flyers, but are there really enough to justify training both of these boys to crossbow? I mean, kind of? After all, Nolan only needs 100 experience, so it's not like it's a huge diversion, and in the chapters before Vola, Jill, and Zeehark show up, who else are you going to train? Well, no one. You could legitimately just train no one. Like, it's tempting to think of the early game Dondragon maps as a training arc to prepare for part 3, but ultimately, no matter how much investment you put into these scrubs, they're still going to perform pretty poorly. There's a genuine argument for just using the strong units the Dawn Brigade hands you and not caring about EXP management. Soth, Volug, Tormod, Muarum, Nyla, the Black Freaking Knight, like these are units who can just delete the maps that they exist on. Yes, you're theoretically making 3-6 a little bit harder by not training up Leonardo, but you can still still train like Zeehark and Jill, and then just leave Leonardo on the bench to gather dust with his little water affinity stuff. So in conclusion, Leonardo isn't the bad unit you think he is. He has a lot of hidden skills and tech that you can take advantage of, but none of it actually matters and he's every bit the bad unit you thought he was. So maybe try him out next time, but also maybe don't? Um. Yeah, I don't really know what the point of this video was, uh, but you you just spent 20 minutes listening to me talk about Leonardo, and that's fun. Genuinely, I hope that you got as much value out of this as I did, because, like, I think that Leonardo is a really interesting unit who ultimately ends up being uninteresting because everything that makes him interesting just doesn't matter. It's weird, he's like the most interesting, uninteresting unit ever. Regardless, thank you so much for watching the video, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to make rambly videos about bad archer units from a game that no one's played. So, shoutouts to Gameboo, Firent, Cordelia Frey, Smaz Ruby, Salmion, Jamie Collins, Herc, Marin Karen, Thick Molder, Danielle Kalaskis, Jagan is an Est, Tailored Muffin, George Granville the 7th PM, SUP, Caius Cole, Gabe the Green, Control Alt Aegis, Joanna the Wrench Witch, Autumn Kelsey, and TB. You make what I do possible. Especially in times like this, I am very thankful for the support. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there is a link to the Patreon below, but please only do so if you can comfortably financially afford it. Otherwise, liking, subscribing, sharing, all that YouTube stuff helps, and regardless of what you choose to do, I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe, gamers.